Hey guys, this is a quick audio tutorial on how to replace the Yamaha FZ1 R1 of certain years Gen 2 FZ1 um, magneto rotors because the magnets fall off and basically it's a faulty part Yamaha made a replacement where the magnets don't fall off so um, it's a good preventative thing to do just otherwise you know you, you risk the chance of having the magnets fall off and your electrics dying in the middle of nowhere so um, I'll be talking about how I did it and how you can prevent getting it you know screwing the job up because it's quite easy to screw up from what I've been reading on forums so firstly what you want to do is put the bike on a center stand or a, like a paddock stand or something you don't want to um, basically put it on the side stand because it sort of helps things fall down outwards because the uh, the roll was on the left of the bike so um, all the washers and stuff would want to fall fall down to the left while the bike's leaning there and what this will do is uh, have increased the risk of things falling into the engine because there's a hole under the rotor that goes down inside to the crankcase and everything straight into the sump so unless you want to take off all the exhaust system and the sump to get parts back out it's better to put the bike on the center stand unfortunately I didn't t manage to take many pictures of uh, taking the cover off in the first place what I did is basically loosen all the bolts there's two pry points at the on the casing one at the top and one at the bottom so 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock uh, what you want to do is take the plug off in the center of the casing and I used a T-handle, a quarter inch T-handle with a hex adapter so the hex hex um, socket could go straight into the rotor and uh, allow me to push it forward while I pull the cases, pry the cases back using um, a, some sort of pry bar or screwdriver or whatever um, and this is really important because you do not want the rotor to get pulled out with the casing otherwise there's a risk of things falling into the engine the next tip I saw was on OK Motor CU's channel um, where basically you place a cardboard sheet under the rotor which blocks the hole which is also under the rotor and stops things falling in um, when you do this the cardboard won't go under the large cog behind the rotor instead it will be pushing against it so what it allows you to do is if you push the cardboard forward while pulling the rotor out backwards uh, it will hold the large cog and the spacers and everything else the washers behind the large cog in place and uh, once the rotor is out I use the T-handle to skewer um, the large cog, the washers and stuff while applying pressure from the cardboard piece keeping them together and aligned roughly and this allows you to take all the rest of the washers and stuff out in one clean line so um, an important thing to note here is the spacer at the back uh, the last sort of thing that comes out with the large cog uh, does have a bevel to it and the beveled edge is facing outwards out towards outside of the bike so into the cog as you can see from the picture that makes it hopefully clearer for the next part it's um you just have to apply oil to the um rotating bits and stuff on the new rotor and uh essentially the same way you took took out the large cog and everything in one batch or one bunch you want to replace it onto the new rotor so in this way you know everything's perfectly aligned when installing the new rotor um, since everything is quite securely uh, placed onto the new rotor you, uh, I didn't use the cardboard piece to replace the, the rotor basically what I did is I aligned it to the bearing inside and but I did have difficulties uh, aligning the large cog back with um, the other cog inside the engine in that hole section the way to the way I got around this was um, after reading other tutorials and stuff. So put the bike in gear 
and just, I just kept on nudging the wheel back and forth, like the back wheel up and down, until um, while applying pressure to the rotor forward, and eventually it lined up and just went all the way in. But this is very important; it, it has to go all the way in and be flush with the with the casing. Otherwise, you've installed it incorrectly, and something's going to go wrong when, if you crank the engine. Once it's installed, it's just a case of um, removing the old gasket, applying a new one, and making sure the two dowels are in place. Um, one on the right, around two o'clock position, and one in the six o'clock position. Otherwise, if if that's gone missing, then uh, you you want to make sure you know where it is because it can cause a lot of problems if it's fallen inside the engine which I've heard it has done for some people when installing the case you want to first put the T-handle or whatever sort of long device you want to use to hold the rotor in through the hole of the casing again and keep it pressed onto the rotor, the new rotor while slowly um, pushing in the casing with this with the stator magnets uh, otherwise um, yeah it might pull the whole thing back out and things might fall into the engine so it's it's vital to keep it held back the rotor with the t-handle or whatever you whatever you use finally the last thing is to torque up the case bolts um, there's M8 and M6 bolts holding the stator cover on you want to torque the M8 bolts first to 22 newton meters, and lastly, you want to do the M6s to 12 newton meters. I think it's kind of important because there's a bearing on the side of the case, so um, you want it to be loaded correctly, I guess. Also, one thing to note was um, I was using the RNG crash protector that didn't actually make the torques, it's some sort of strange design issue with the bolts that they give you. You can't talk it up to spec, otherwise it squashes the crap out of the plastic. So um, if you have the same protector as me, then uh, just hand tie it. I took a punt on that.